So please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Eddie Francis, radio personality, Q93 Seattle, uh, Twitter nerd, nerd in general, and just normal everyday sports fan and lover of life most of the time. Okay, nice. So my first question to you is, um, now that you're back at Q, what is that feeling like? You know, I'm going to tell you, the thing that summed it up the most for me was uh, <laughs> it's euphoria in a way, and I didn't realize it was something I was necessarily going to feel like that. Like, to be honest with you, I completely, because I think a lot of times when people get in positions or they have something, they feel like they were entitled to that. So I decided in my life, I was just going to move on. Like, I'm not going to be the guy that reflects back on my time at Cube or Cube should bring me back or Cube defined me. And so for my own personal well-being, I like, I severed that tie. And I was like, okay, that was this phase of my life. Let's move on. So I didn't even used to like to bring up Cube, not even to be negative towards him, but for myself mentally, I needed to move forward. So now that I'm back, it, initially it was surreal. Um, and another thing that kind of threw me off once I made the announcement on social media, because I had the information about a week before, it's just the outpour of love. Because when you do radio, it's weird how to describe it to people. You're in a studio usually with you or just another person, but you're having a conversation with 50,000 people. Mm -hmm. And most of the time it's a one-way conversation. So you never know how you impact people. And a lot of times you impact people you don't even know. So. Someone can have some kind of feeling towards you of positivity or love or admire and look up to you. And there's no way you can really figure that out. I mean, you interact with people and people say that to you, but, you know, people are going to generally be nice to you face to face. I don't know how you really feel in your heart. So once I seen the reaction of how many people were like genuinely excited that I was back, it was it was overwhelming for me. I was kind of stepped back because you, you never know the impression that you really leave on people, especially the people you don't know. Um, so it was it was surreal. and. It, it, it made me feel like, wow, I didn't really know I left a fingerprint on so many people. Mm -hmm. That's dope. I'm sure that's a dope feeling. Uh, next question I have for you, you're a big homer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how I would describe you yeah. uh, as far as being a fan. Um, but I was, uh, you said before, like we talked about yesterday, you split your childhood between here and Baltimore. Yeah. Um, are you a Baltimore fan as well? Not really. So here's how it works. So I, I, when I, was, I was born here and I left when I was little about six. And then I went to most of elementary school in Baltimore. So growing up in Baltimore, I didn't really there's not there's only there was only baseball there. All mm -hmm. there was was the Baltimore Orioles. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't super into baseball growing up, but you know, I knew the Orioles were around, people bring it up. Cal Ripken Jr. is big at the time. So in my head, I was like, okay, the Orioles are my favorite baseball team. There was no football, there was no basketball. So as I got older, I moved back here about twelve. I remember my little league football coach was like, Do you watch football? I was like, you know. Not really. He goes, well, if you're going to play football, you got to watch football. So at that time, the Huskies were good. So I started watching the Huskies. The Seahawks sucked at the time, so I'm not even in front. I wasn't even a Seahawks fan. I didn't become a Seahawks fan until 98. Mm -hmm. because I had so many favorite teams growing up. That was like, dude, I'm tired of picking teams. I, mean, I need to just be my home team team. Mm -hmm. So uh, the year I started watching Huskies, they won the national championship. So I'm like, I love football. This is <laughs> great. The Huskies are my favorite team. I love the Huskies. So it's kind of surreal for me because... You know, growing up, Bino Bryant, Napoleon Kaufman, uh, Mario Bailey, Dave Hoffman, Steve Edmond. Like, I love those guys. Those are my heroes. So, um, I started off being a Husky fan, so that was my first team. And when I moved here, someone goes, hey, uh, you know about King Griffey Jr.? You know, you're a little kid. I'm thinking, maybe he said the name on you. You mean Cal Ripken Jr.? Mm -hmm. He's like, no, King Griffey Jr. I'm like, who's King Griffey Jr.? So, I started figuring out who King Griffey Jr. was. And I'm like, yo, I love this guy. Like... I'm a Griffey fan, so I love the Mariners. <laughs> and then um, the Sonics were good around then. You had Gary Payton and Sean Kemp, and I'm like, yo, I'm in. So once I became my adolescence being a sports fan, it was so much stuff going, even though the Mariners weren't good, mm -hmm. you, had, you had Griffey. And the, you had the Huskies win the national championship. And then you had this up and coming team with Gary Payton and Sean Kemp and Sam Perkins and all these guys. So I was like all in on them. Now the reason I became a, a Seahawks fan was because growing up, so the Seahawks were so bad back then. Just no one, it didn't seem like to me no one was like really a diehard fan. And my dad, going, my, my stepdad raised me. He's from Ohio. He's not really a hands-on dude. He loves sports, but he's a guy like, who thinks they'll win the game? Whoever scores the most points. So like he's never going to give you like a rah-rah, anything. He's a Bengals fan. So even though I was a Bengals fan at one point, you know, so that's why I like Ohio State because of him. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't really develop a favorite football team like through a lot of people. It was like, because I have a little sister. And she's so much younger than me, and she's a Seahawks fan because I made her basically be a Seahawks fan. So I didn't have that growing up. So by the time I was 18, I was just so tired of picking different teams every year. It always feels like the Eagles one year, the Steelers one year. It was you know, <laughs> the Bengals a different year. I was like, you know what? 
I'm just gonna be the home team guy. So mm -hmm. that's what made me a Seahawks fan. Okay. That's what's up. And you're a nerd too. Big time. You're a nerd. Are you a bigger DC fan or Marvel fan? Marvel. And Marvel. why? Um, I just grew up like in the nineties when the X-Men cartoon hit, I was already reading X-Men comics. So like I don't know what the what just ruined me the X-Men, but I just loved the X-Men. So I was like, okay, I'm rocking with these guys, and then once you rock with the X-Men, you kind of got to figure out their world. But okay, so Spider-Man's over here, and then okay, Captain America's over here, and then you got Hulk. Hulk's cool. He's over here, and I think the reason why I'm such a superhero fan because I always kind of got. I remember Iron Man. I had his toy when I was super duper little, and I didn't know really what it was. But once I saw it on TV, I'm like, hey, I had that toy when I was little. I like that guy. Or my stepdad, when I was real little, he gave me this Spider-Man towel. I mean, I was like five. My stepdad had, like been around since forever. So he gave me a Spider-Man towel, and I remember no matter what I was doing, if I was getting wet, I needed my towel. Like, not no other towel, like I needed my Spider-Man towel. To the point where that towel to this day is like paper thin, you can see through it, I still have it. I took it with me to see the original Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire. So I'm just, I'm a big nerd, and I'm an unabashed nerd too, so it's not one of those things where I try to be the cool guy and act like I'm not into nerd stuff. Like, I love it, like I love, because nerd culture right now is pop culture. Mm -hmm. Like, there was a point in time when I was going over in comic books, I'm in high school. My friends are reading comic books. Like, they're not, like, what are you reading comics for? I mean, there were no movies and stuff back then, so that's the only way I could get comics was comics. So, you know, that's what started me loving nerd culture, and then now, moving forward, everyone loves it now, and they don't even realize it. I'm sitting there talking about Walking Dead at work, and we bring up the, the comic. Dude, next to me, Super and Walking Dead, he's like, that was a comic? I'm like, you guys don't even know. Guardians of the Galaxy is something like, I'm a nerd, and I didn't even care about Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm -hmm. You go see the movie, it's the biggest movie of the year, like literally the highest grossing movie of the year. A, car, a comic book I didn't even read or care about. Like I could tell you Rocket Raccoon and Groot, that's all I knew about Guardians of the Galaxy. And now it's the number one movie in the country. So, I mean, for me, I think we live in the, the golden era of like geek culture. Like you come to my house and I have commissioned Batman paintings. Mm -hmm. like, like someone painted it for me and I paid hundreds of dollars for it. Or in my living room, I have a Avengers like popping out of my wall in my living room. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, so I have a comic book room strictly for comics and comic stuff and toys and stuff. And uh, it's not for something I really got made fun of. It's just people knew that was, um, that was my personality. Like, okay, Eddie's this. I remember uh, DJ Hyphen said this. He was like, you're the, you live two completely different lives and somehow you make it normal. It's like mm -hmm. you're the club guy at one point in time that's over here, but then you're like this super nerd over here. And that's kind of, I don't know, I just, my mom told me when I was a little kid, just like what you like. Mm -hmm. And don't let anybody, because I think especially as black people, especially black youths, we try to do the black thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know if that's changed. I'm 34, so I'm a little bit older. But I remember a few years ago, I saw this little black girl skateboarding down the street. And I was thinking, when I was a little kid, that would have been like one of those things that people would have been like, you can't do that. Black girls don't skate. So I don't know if we've, that mentality's evolved or not, but if it has, that's awesome that people could just like what they like. Go for it. Okay, so I got a story. So, Back when trailers used to come out, it wasn't this instant, everyone knows what movie's coming out, what day, what time, what day the trailer's gonna come out. Like, you have to read a magazine about a movie mm -hmm. and then go to a movie and then all of a sudden, that trailer just happened to play. So, when I was a little kid, I'm talking about this is 10 years before the movie came out, I read in the Wizard magazine, they're working on the Spider-Man movie and they're working on the X-Men movie. So I'm like, cool, so I'm, I didn't realize for the next 10 years I was gonna be waiting for this. Mm -hmm. So. Fast forward when the movie gets closer to coming out, uh, I'm reading my like, there's castings, there's mm -hmm. this, there's that, Patrick Stewart's been cast. I'm like, oh, yeah. so this is really about to happen. So, but you still don't know when a trailer or anything's gonna happen, what it looks like. So, every single time I went to a movie back then, I would like look at the movie, like, okay, this is gonna be one for X Men. What's in it? Is this look like? Nah, this isn't it. Every single time I saw a trailer, I go see Blade. This is the tie in. Not thinking, oh, Blade's a Marvel movie, so this is where we're gonna debut the trailer, because it didn't work like that back then. So, I go to the movie. And it starts off, and every single time I see a trailer, I'm thinking X-Men. So I go into my normal X-Men, and I'm looking, and I, and I start thinking, like, nah, dog, this is about to be really be it. And then the first thing you see is, the, you don't see Wolverine, but you see the claws come out of your hands, and I'm like, oh my god. So now I don't even want to watch Blade anymore. <laughs> I just want to see this X-Men movie. Like, I'm like, oh my god. So I had a best friend at the time who, I, we were nerds, we used to like walk miles to the comic store together, like, I was at a dude's wedding, like, we were nerds together, I'm still a nerd, he's less of a nerd, but he still wants to see this stuff. So I'm in the movie, I'm like, all I want to do is get out this movie and call him, because he doesn't know this is happening. <laughs> so I get out the movie, Jamal, guess what, I just saw the movie, the trailer for X-Men. He's like, what? It's like, yes, dog, it's about to come out for real, like, it comes out next year. 
So back then, this is before I started working Cube. Next year I work at Cube, I'm like, cool, this is perfect, blah, blah, blah. We announced the, the day for Summer Jam, and we're like, oh, man, cool, day for Summer Jam. All of a sudden they say the day for Summer Jam, like, that's the day <laughs> X-Men comes out. And I'm thinking, damn, this, I've been waiting for 10 years this movie to come out, I can't even see it opening day. So Summer Jam, I had to see it the next day, I went by myself, I was like, mm -hmm. I gotta go see this movie. And to be honest with you, didn't even like it that much. Like, I was mm -hmm. like, oh, this is okay. Yeah. But X-Men 2, I love. Did you really? You liked it? I loved it a lot. It was better. X-2, was, to me, was the best one at all. X-3 sucked. I hate X-3 as much as everybody. The only reason, here's the only reason why I didn't hate it. I got Colossus. The first YouTube video I ever saw was, I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. That's he, hella funny. Yeah, so he did that. I got to see Iceman actually ice out, which I thought was cool. Was there anything else in it, really? Um, an X3? No. Uh, well, what's her, uh, the Phoenix was in it. Phoenix was in it, Angel was in it, he was nothing special. That's, oh my god, that made me so mad. Archangel was in it, but he was terrible in it. He got the look shit. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't great, but I got to see Iceman ice out, which, like, was, was crazy for me. I was excited for that. I was, I'm still just waiting for him to make him good in a movie. Well, here's the problem with those X movies. They're so busy making the Wolverine-centric movies. Yeah. Okay, let me rewind. So Avengers. There wasn't really a centerpiece in Avengers. It was no. a it was a uh, what do they call that when it's an ensemble piece. Mm -hmm. Everyone had their moments. Well, every moment in every X Men movie is Wolverine's moment. Mm -hmm. Like, even though they technically have their moment, they don't. Like you'll get one scene where Bobby ices out and that's it. But every single movie's focused around Wolverine. Mm -hmm. Well, Cyclops is the leader, so Cyclops a little bit more. Jean Grey's a pivotal pivotal character, show her a little more. Right. Like you could argue Captain America 3 is a Scarlet Witch movie. I mean, Scar Scarlett Johansson was called Scarlet Witch because it's a Black Widow movie. Mm -hmm. Like, she got the shine in it. Mm -hmm. But they never do that in the, the Fox movies because it's always Wolverine's movie. Every right. single one. Well, like you said, he's a cash cow. Yeah. Um, but I think if they had different directors, like if you brought in like a Joss Whedon or you brought in a... Um, I just, I like John Favreau as well. Yeah, he killed I think, I think if he was um, the director on some of those X-Men movies... But here's so here's my issue. Back to Iceman. Omega level mutant. Omega level? It's yeah, like, there's only like five of them. Yeah. Well, no, there's like seven. Like se well, no, because I looked at the list. And it's Magneto's more. Omega level. Bobby's Omega level. Newer people like uh, isn't Nathan? Nathan Gray. He's Omega level. Yeah. Um, who else? I know Is they were Storm Omega level? they were debating it. I was just about to say that they were debating whether or not she was, but I guess she's not. Oh, she's not. No, and there was somebody. Man, there's. There's there's a couple more, but like not really ones that you'd be as familiar with, but of like the man, like the core cast of you know X Men, Bobby Drake, bro. He's a, he's an amazing. And they movie. need to have a, they need to have a movie with him and Emma Frost because she's the reason why he and he is what he is, or he would he discovered he's as powerful as he is. Is that what it was? Because she used his body. Oh, that's right. Because he's so self conscious that he can't be Omega level, right? Isn't that what it is? Until until she damn near killed him, and then it was like, oh, I can do all of this. <coughs> I can do everything? Yeah, because he could basically freeze this whole room. Like she froze the she when she was in his body, he was swimming. He she froze the Hudson River, and then while in his body, still floated through it like he was swimming through the frozen river. Like how filthy is that? And then like he sustained some type of injury to where he had to be all ice. Like that's the only way he could regenerate his parts. And then she taught him how to get back to the human form even with the injuries. I know what I like the two by X Men three uh, fastball special. Mm -hmm. I just got to see that. I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, and you had to get another character. They don't use Colossus every single time. Yeah. Like, they never, like, Colossus is a dope ass character. He's always, like, some background dude with one or two months. He doesn't really have a story, though, that you would know as well. Yeah, true, but it's like you can do so many things with these characters and you're so busy focusing on Wolverine. Wolverine. Yeah. No, I get it. And I agree with you. That's just how it is. And that's why First Class was cool to a degree, because it was like, oh, this is a, a Magneto Professor X story. Like, mm -hmm. it, was, it, it was a Magneto Professor X mystique story. It's like, oh, we got three characters in this. As opposed to one we care about. Yeah, and they did that. I don't know how, why they pulled him into that when they did um, Days of Future Past. Like, they was super Wolverine. You know what I mean? Like, from beginning to end. Yeah. He was a driving force in, in the film. So, oh, we gotta get... Well, he can make it back because it's like... That's not how this supposed to supposed to work, man. This isn't a Wolverine thing. The Wolverine movie was terrible. It was awful. Both of them. The second one was less terrible. Yeah, because they actually had a story. The problem is, you don't... Marvel's done a really good job of giving us, like, cameos. And it's mm -hmm. like... Wait, time out. Where's where's everybody? Like we're just getting Silver Samurai. That's it. Yeah. We're just 
So he got just given a silver samurai. And that was weak too. That was weak. That was horrible the way that they did that. Like really, this is this is the silver samurai you're gonna put out there? Yeah, I don't know. I'm telling you, man, Fox. Hey, okay, well, I mean, we'll take it. I'm already here at the movie. I'm already here in the theater. I'm already watching it. I'll also see how it plays out. It's just terrible. But, sir, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Man, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. Now I get to go home and watch Seahawks game. Yes, sir. Well, you might know the score. Is it on right now? Yeah, it's on. It just started, probably. Let me see. I got a whole bunch of text work doing it. So I'm